previously on Nine Hours, Nine Persons, Nine Doors. And now, back to the escape. Open sesame to the way of we go. That was too bad. That looked like really complicated from the outset. But it really is actually not too shabby. It's just the hard thing was finding that little container you put the coal in. Yes, the door's open. Given the circumstances, Junpei's happiness was certainly understandable. He seemed to share his excitement. Booyah, bitches! Boo freaking doodly ya! Why don't you go go get June now? Since and I will keep an eye on this door. Santa snorted. <laughs> but why do we need to do that? Even if it's shut, even if it shuts it, you know how to solve the puzzle, we can just open it again. Well, I suppose that's true. Snarky bastard. Shall all three of us go and collect June then? Nah, I'm cool. I'll let Junpei handle it. He must get giggity with her anyway. Hey, shut up, I. Uh, you're right. He still seemed irritated by something, however, and sat down the stairs petulantly. So you are only interested in being contrary. <laughs> he sat with the air of long-suffering parent. My God, I want to freaking beat the shit out of you. All right, I'll go get you. I'll be right back. He gave a quick nod to Ace and Santa and dashed off down the stairs. Before long, he was back on the first floor next to conveyor belt in June. As he drew closer, she stood up slowly. Are you okay? He did his best to sound calm and nonchalant, but there was no hiding the genuine concern in his voice. Oh, uh, yes, I'm okay now that you're here. Okay, why are your clothes off, though? Oh, you know, they just happened to fall off when I was sitting here, totally, uh, helpless and defenseless. Uh, take me, take me here, damn it! Hmm, man, I don't know. I'm not really sure what you're mean going with here, but hey. You know what? It's all right. Eventually, we'll we'll discuss what whatever it is you're talking about together. I'm sorry I made you worry. June blushed. He wasn't sure if he, she was embarrassed or still feverish. Just to make sure, he reached out and placed his hand against her forehead. Good. You're feeling a lot better. She was feeling far less warm than she had or she had earlier, but it still wasn't down to what seemed normal to him. Are you sure you're all right? He had to be sure. June gave him a look. Oh, you're such a warrior! You're such a warrior, Jumpy. Oops, I mean warrior. A warrior? <laughs> oh yeah, I'm a warrior. Mmm. Did you see me carrying that coal? Mmm. Check out these freaking triceps. Mmm. Oh yeah. June giggled. Uh. He wasn't sure if she just made a joke or not, but seeing his, her smile again made Junpei feel at ease. If she was well enough to smile and laugh, that was really. Then she was really feeling much better. He gave her a friendly poke on the forehead. Come on, let's go. Go where? Oh, right, I didn't tell you. We got the exit open, so... Great! Let's go! Jubei clasped her hands and nodded urgently. Oh, you just faked it, didn't you? Because you didn't want to carry fucking coal. You suck. <laughs> As they walked back toward the exit, Jun Junpei noticed Santa sitting on the stairs. What is he looking at? Yeah, yeah, so ever holding something in his right hand and staring with a strange expression. Junpei and June slowed down and finally stopped in front of him. What are you looking at? He didn't answer without looking up, his voice quiet. It's a photo. It's my sister. Sister? Santa, you got a sister? Santa simply nodded. Yeah. He was as cute as a button. June cocked her head, confused. She's only... She was only about an inch tall, then? Santa glared at her. Ah, sorry. It's an inch is a little large for a button. Ah, ha, ha. Probably more like half an inch. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, the pain. So horrible. The worst joke ever. What? I just... No, no. That's your joke. That was your joke for this whole game. You don't get any more than that. But you've had, like, a whole bunch of jokes. Yeah, but mine were good. Yours was, like... Oh my god. Like, you just murdered that child in that picture, pretty much. But I... No. No. I came and look at you. Santa didn't smile or laugh. He suddenly turned back to his picture and spoke. I was her Santa Claus. Ah, that's why I picked Santa. A sudden revelation took Junpei by surprise. He had no idea what Santa meant. He glanced at June, who shook her head. He didn't... She didn't know either. You ever heard of the story of the two Santa Clauses? 
Goes down, goes down a long time ago, there were two Santas. One of them wore white and the other wore black. The white Santa gave presents to good kids, and the black Santa played tricks on the bad kids. They went on like that for, for a while, but eventually uh, the black Santa's tricks started to get worse and worse. Pretty soon the white Santa couldn't stand it anymore. He stabbed the, back, the black Santa to death. Ooh. When he stabbed the other Santa, the, the white Santa got blood all over his clothes. And that's why, these days, his clothes are red. Ew, that's a morbid, that's a morbid look at Santa. Oh, Daddy, you're telling me Santa's a murderer? That's right, honey, but he killed bad Santa. But I still mean to kill people. Is that all that red is all blood? That's right, that's right, you little booger. Huh, so you better not fuck up or I'll freaking destroy you. Oh, God! You can say that Santa's red all, is all that's left of the black Santa. Jimmy was silent, I could think of nothing to say. She was staring at Santa, a sadness plain on her face. He continued. I wonder which Santa I am. The white Santa or the black Santa? You're like, ah! Uh. Ah! Uh. Uh. Alright, let's go. Santa stood up suddenly, his downcast demeanor gone. He shoved the picture back in his pocket and headed back up the stairs, taking the two, taking them two at a time. That was weird! Jimmy and Chun looked at each other. There's nothing they could think of to say. What are you two doing? Let's get moving. Come on. Sam's voice echoed across the room from above them. They nodded and followed him quickly to the stairs. Ace was waiting for them at the top. He was leaning against the handrail. He looked very tired. Ugh, morphine. I need more morphine. The door had shut, but it wasn't a cause for concern. Junpei quickly solved the disc puzzle a second time, and the door opened once again. Oh! Yeah! In single fire, they walked through. After walking for nearly 15 feet, they found themselves in front of a metal door. It opened easily enough, and they passed through it as well. A new room stretched out before them. Hello? Okay. Yeah, do we have another puzzle? Is this a warehouse? No, I believe this is a cargo room. This must be where they store all of all this vessel's freight. Wooden crates everywhere. I wonder how old they are. Junpei, Ace, and June had stood unconsciously pausing, stopped unconsciously pausing to take in their new surroundings. Jan's voice broke through their momentary trance. Well, they probably start start with finding the exit, right? Let's get going. Ah, oh, another one. Well, here we go. This room now. Oh, yes. Junpei, I'm, I gotta be honest with you. Can you stop doing that? It's just really not cool. Shut up, all right? It's my, it's my time. It's my time. Okay, let's do it. There are a bunch of, there are a bunch of bags here. I wonder what's in them. <gasps> it's me! It's my drink, hey, baby! Oh, yeah! Good as new, baby! <laughs> Whoa. Uh, that's kind of weird. A car with a nice man's face burn on it. Oh uh, yeah, baby, I'm totally good! What's that? It's a card. There's a headshot on it. A headshot? Yeah. I'm not really sure what purposes it could possibly serve. Is that it? Something in the bag. Okay. These crates are a little small than the others. They look, they're, they're the children of the other crates. Okay, they, it sounds like some sort of fairy tale. Oh, uh, really? I don't know, man. You ever think about how crates would reproduce? It doesn't sound like a fairy tale to me. <laughs> You're a really weird child. Or you dropped it in your head as much as a kid. Hey! It's Santa! Car with Santa's face print on it. Oh, ho, ho. These coins are quite large. They seem to be tied up to one another with sturdy straps. Sturdy straps. Sturdily strapping. Oopsies. No, I'm trying to... No, I want to click the bag that's underneath it. It's seven. Woo! We search all the boxes. There's nothing in them. Hello? Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, man, I look good, don't I? Not cool, man. I took this picture without my permission. <laughs> it looks pretty cool, though. You look really handsome in this picture. Mm. Mm. She starts licking the picture. Mm. Uh. Hey, hey, June. Give me saliva all over my awesome picture, alright? 
I don't know what you're trying to do. Ugh, man, I still don't understand girls. Hey, knock it off, lovebirds. What? We're not a couple, not at all, not in any way. Yeah, totally. She was just, I don't know. What were you doing, actually? Licking it? Licking your card? This must be. Oh, no. Don't look at it. I'm not cute at all. I'm, I'm not photogenic. And I didn't, don't look sexy either. Thanks to Clover, my, my skin looks gross. That's because she's like five. <laughs> I'm not sexy like Lotus. He was like, yeah, you're right. You don't have the boobs. I know guys good for women who look like Lotus. But, 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 I'm trying to. I'm drinking lots of milk. I'm going to make my boobs grow. I'm doing the best I can. <laughs> So please don't call me, call me a board or trash can or a cutting board. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> or big flat things, plateau. Or... Well, wait a minute. I haven't said anything like that, have I? Mm. So you say you like my, my flat chest? Uh, I didn't say that. No, jump it. <laughs> okay. What do we got here? It's locked. We need a key. All the boxes have numbers on them. Do they? Oh. They spent down and picked up something that had been sitting next to the box. Should we take a look at this? Cards. Oh, we got... Hey, we got lotuses. Okay. Ugh, fuck this, lo this one. Rah! Throws it away. Look at that dirty whore. There's a picture of lotus on this card. And her, her hair is ridiculous. It's like clay or something. This is the pot to the kettle. <laughs> okay, some number of bucks and card pictures of all of us. Does that mean we need to collect the cards we don't have? Gotta catch them all, gotta catch them all. Oh, hello there. Oh, look at me, not all blown to pieces. Oh, boy. Snake. Is that, is that Snake's card? Yeah, you want to see it? No, that's fine. It's back when he had a face. Haha. <laughs> too soon, man. Too soon. Way too soon. Like, this is Clover's card. You know, look at this photo. She's kind of cute, isn't she? What? Oh, uh, what? What? What did I say? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. Nothing. Why does your smile make me feel cold? <laughs> You're so stupid. Hot dog. And I'm last. Of course I am. They say the best for last. Hell yeah, baby. It's Ace's card. You look so like some kind of European lord. Oh, my headshot. You wanna see it? It's actually a pretty good picture. No, I don't need to see it. I always look good. That's how this goes. In fact, we really ought to get back to our search. Man, you're such a freaking... Such a buzzkill, man. Alright, we got all the things. By all powers combined. They had finally collected all nine picture cards. All that remains to insert the cards into the slots at the front of each box. Jinbei stared at the cards in his hands. Ace peered over his shoulder at them. You know which card goes in which box, yes? Jinbei gave him a look. Uh, yeah. <laughs> of course I do. It's really obvious. Just match our numbers to the numbers in the box. Where is this? The card with the picture of Ace on it goes into the number box number one. And uh, the picture of Ace goes into box number two. And blah, 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 blah. Oh, I see. It makes so much sense. They thought he might have imagined it, but he could have sworn he stiffened. I'll leave the rest to you. Quickly turn and walk away. Strange, Junpei thought. Huh? Oh, well, whatever. Doing his best to clear his mind for ta the task at hand, he turned, he turned back towards the box. It was time to solve the puzzles of the nine boxes. Yay! Nine boxes. Stared stare at them for a moment and then began. Ace car went into box one, and then Snakes went into box two, and, and Santa's into three, and Clover's into four, and Newbase into five, and Turn into six, and seven, and the seven, and the and Finally, the ninth man, who crazy ass dude. You yeah, no, don't no, put me in there, I don't wanna. Ah. As soon as he inserted all the cards. Cool, all, about, all nine box lids po popped open at once, appeared inside. In each box was a single pin. Alright. They look a little bit like sewing pins, but much thicker. 
but he collected them all quickly and shoved them into his pocket. Sweet. It's like some kind of pins used for sewing. There are nine of them in total and they have numbers on them that run from one to nine. Okie dokie. Well, I guess whatever it is, it's probably up here, so let's go. Let's do it. So go up three stories. What are you, what are you waiting for, Junpei? Or I'm going. There's the only door here except for the one we just came in through. This is the exit. No shit, Sherlock. Of course it's locked. Is it electronic lock? No, just a keyhole right under underneath the doorknob. So to open it, we've got to find the key that fits the keyhole. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Let's go up more. Here we go. What we got here? Some sort of boxy device. There's six six holes here. It looks like the pins I just found would be perfect. Fit for them. But once you found the nine boxes, right. Well, why don't you try it? Alright, let's see what happens. I think two, four, six should go on the top part and three, five, seven on the bottom part. Well, some of them lit up. Yeah, three and six. I wonder if there's some kind of rule that determines which lights go on. Well, I put the two, four, six pins on the top part and three, five, seven, the digital roots, I guess. So two, three, uh, so three lit up. We got six, 12, three. Yeah, that's digital root. Eight, 15, six. Yep, digital roots. Woohoo! Hmm, I think, I think maybe it's the digital root. Hot dog! You know, this is the thing I just figured out to say. And then this one does it, and then this one, and then this one, and then this one, and then this one. And then this one, and then this one. Makes sense, right? I see. I see. Well, the lights match the digital root, the pin insert in the top and lower parts will lighten up. So that's how it works. There's one other thing I'd like to check. Well, if he wants to try, he's certainly welcome to. So he put in the one, two, and three pins, and the six, seven, and eight at the bottom. Oh. Ah. Oh, they turned off. 21. Did you roof? Therefore, light 3 turns off. Ah, I see. Okay, so... Can't do the same ones again. 6. Therefore, light 6 turns off. Oh, I get it now. The digital roof is for the pins you insert. It's the same as the number of the lights that are lit. Those lights turn off. Yeah, it looks like that's the trick. Alright, now we need to know how it works. Now we know how it works. You wanna give it a try? Wait, you mean, you know what we're supposed to do with the, these lights? Well, no, but I figured we'd try and see if we can turn them all on. I figure something's gotta happen if you manage that. Ugh, turn on the lights. Oh my god, it makes so much sense. Let's make sure we know how this all works, right? Yes, I freaking got it, please. Good lord. And so all the holes are filled, giggity. The lights will turn on and shit will start blowing up. However, digital roots corresponds to a light that's already on and be ba ba da ba ba da ba. Alright, let's do it! Sweet. Woohoo! That wasn't too bad. F. A light's turned on, the shutters opened up. Hey, does that mean we gotta do it again? Man, I thought I was. I thought I was doing so well. <laughs> okay, so we got nine holes. And there's F up to the above. I don't know what the F means, but I do know one thing. What's that? This time there's nine holes, we got nine keys. I mean, oh, uh, that's boring. Well, I just try it all. Alright, alright. I gotta do it in the shape of an F. Okay, I guess not. F means 15. 15. Yeah. Base 10 is F and hex, right? Right, yeah, that's gotta be it. Alright, let's give this one more shot. I see. Yeah, I gotta get every part of this from every angle equal 15. Ooh, that's interesting. 6, 7, 15. 2, 4. Uh. That'd be 13, that'd be 15. Two, okay, 10, 15. That's not 15. 11, 15, that's it! Right? Wait, no, 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 diagonally. Uh, 
five, twelve, no. And three, six. Not even close there. Fifteen. And then fifteen. Seventeen. Ten, fifteen. These two. It's too fucking big. How's that? Seven. Yes! Woohoo! Oh yeah. Oh yeah, baby! <laughs> no. Oh man, I feel good. I feel good to solve that one. There we go, all pins inserted. Woo! Yes! Oh, we did it! Power's on now. Looks like there's electricity going in the monitor on top now. Alright, let's see if we can activate the device on, on the top. Oh god, it's still another thing? Green button, a red button, and a lever. What are these two? I think this might help. But what the hell is this? Where where did he find this? What is that? Where'd you find it? I found it when you were messing around with the pinholes. Looks like instructions for this thing. According to what it says here, this thing's a remote control for that. That? Yeah, that. Oh! What's the point? Oh. <laughs> That's it, the machine over there. Apparently it's uh, called the Pushmaster 5000. Pushmaster 5000? Whoa, that's awesome. <laughs> Are you serious? Whatever, so are we supposed to do, do the Pushmaster 5000? See the coffin over there on top of the crates? Yeah. Do you know what, what the deal is with it? Want to know what the deal is with it? Oh. Oh, is that where the, the dead chick is, maybe? Uh, I do. You wanna check it out? Yeah. Alright, how do you think we're gonna get it there? Uh, well, well, there were some crates in the right of the fence that someone piled up like stairs. Can we make a path to the coffin from there? How do we do that? Line up the crates, I guess? Yeah, that sounds about right. I guess it's just another of Zero's puzzles. Yeah. Alright, let's give it a shot. It looks like the Bushmaster 5000 runs off the battery, so keep it from using it up its energy too fast. It's been programmed, so it'll only be start moving once this path has been completely programmed in. Oh, right. I'll keep that in mind. New material's been added. Monitor shows a top down view of the area we can do the shit. Once I want to send my orders to the Bushmaster, I just push the lever. Alright, let's give this a try. Just keep in mind there's a limit on the battery, alright? That's what it says in the manual. Good boots, huh? Just keep in mind that the Pushmaster 5000 can't move heavy metal crates, okay? Ugh, go. In four directions, cannot move diagonally. The Pushmaster moves counter exceeds the battery life, it will be reset. Oh, okay. Alright. Let's do this. Okay, I'm done putting in the program. What do I do next? Just be quiet and watch. See, it's moving already. 
getting it. Oh, look at you, Pushmaster. Awesome, Pushmaster did just what I told it to. Oh my god, it's all coming together. Great, now we can reach the coffin. We just need to climb those crates over the fence. Yay! Woo! We ready! We ready! We ready! Up we go. Coffin, baby. Walk slowly past the row of crates until they came to the coffin. They stopped and nodded to one another, and Junpei put his hand on the lid of the coffin. Oh boy. <laughs> mummy! <-m -m> <laughs> uh. Uh. Ah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> he smirked heartily at his own joke. Ah, ah, ah. Junpei grumbled and shook his head. Whatever, just. Whatever, just open it. <laughs> Junpei re resisted the urge to remind Santa that he would have to open it a long. We would have had to open a long time ago if Santa hadn't interrupted and quickly threw up off the coffin, the lid of the coffin. Ah! Peered inside. Oh, well, there's no dead person in here. Contrary to what they expected, the inside of the coffin was quite large. It was mostly empty, but not completely so. I think on the bottom was a rusty key. And next to the key... Wow. It's a gun! Yeah. A revolver. Freaking gold, too. Look at it. It's sexy. It's pretty old. I wonder if this is a replica? Jupe reached down slowly and cautiously picked up the revolver. In his hand, it felt heavy. He checked the cylinder. There were six bullets. Holy shit. He'd never seen a real gun he'd never seen a real gun or even a real bullet before. He couldn't tell if these were real or not. The barrel was rifled and nothing nothing seemed to be blocky in. As Ace had said, the gun was a very old, old one. However, it appeared to have been well maintained for if it was a real gun. Jimmy thought it was most likely function, function perfectly if it was real. However, holding the gun made Junpei felt feel unpleasant. Carefully, he placed it back in the coffin. You're not gonna take it? Of course not. All something like this is gonna do is cause more trouble. It's a powerful weapon that gives one person a huge advantage. Oh, I don't know. I think that would be way too dangerous to have around here. We're in enough danger already. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Dude, after hearing what Santa said earlier, I'm not sure if I trust him. I would just, like, throw it over the side of the fence where no one can get it. Maybe, maybe Zero put this gun here hoping that something like that might happen. In other words, maybe you put it in here to make us fight each other. In that case, we should most certainly leave it here. For one, I have no desire to let Zero control me. The others nodded. They had no desire to be under Zero's control either. Okay, we've got that figured out, but you, you're gonna leave the key in there, are you? Yeah, yeah, of course I'm not. They picked up the rusty key and slid it at the top of the coffin back into place, and the gun back where they had found it. Okay, well, maybe not. Woohoo! Rusty key. Maybe I could use this to Ooh. open that door that's back there. Alright. See you later. See you later, gun. Open, baby. Let's just put this key in here and yes, see what do. Yay! Looks like it's open, Jumpy. I see. This key should open this door. What are you waiting for? Let's go. Let's get the shit out of here. Yes, it's opening. I found a way out. Yeah. You found it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm awesome, yeah, jumpy, woo! Oh, backflip, whoosh! Calm down, you little shit. The hallway I left the cargo room had straight had, had straight toward the stern. Jumpy and the other three people, uh, other three proceeded down it silently. So this is along, a large room opened up on the left side, hand side. It looked familiar. Oh, we're on the other side of the elevator. An iron gray covered each of the elevators. Jupe and his companions drew to a stop and began to discuss wh what their next move should be. We've seen this elevator before. We got off on the we got off the one on the left just a little while ago. We went, th we went through number six and that just took us to the engine room. Yes, and after that we passed through the cargo room. And now we're back here. In other words, we made a loop. We're back where we started. Jupe pressed the elevator. Generally, he pushed the triangle button on the wall next to it. Moment passed. And number nine was in there. Hey, what's going on? <laughs> the 
elevator door opened. How's the inside look? And shut. Pushing the button apparently restored power to the elevator. Oh, okay. The elevator was now functional. What do we do? Should we return to sea deck? No, this no, this always keeps going. If we do end up going back, I think we should see what's down there first. I agree. Let's go. The decision made. Junpei and his companions left the elevator elevators behind and continued down the hallway. Sometime later, San, who had been walking several paces in front of the rest, suddenly stopped. Sitting the wall in front of him was a door. Oh. So far as June could see that Junpei could see there was no other way to proceed. It was a, it was the door or nothing. All right, let's open it. Junpei took a deep breath, raised himself, and then grabbed the doorknob, pulled the pulled the door open, <laughs> or pushed the door open. Whatever, I'm doing what I want. <laughs> I'm pulling it open. <laughs> Boss for a moment, then stepped in through the room. There he saw the number that had hung over their heads since they woken up. Hey, we made it. <laughs> Hey, I, I picked the right door then, I guess. Nine. Like the numbers on every door, this one too was rough shape made of red paint. The door was set to the back of the wall room. Back wall of the room. Jibei leapt toward it with a sudden burst of hopeful energy. It was a large double door, heavy and full of solemn importance. He grabbed hold of the door handle and shook. Nothing, but he hadn't expected it to open. I'm guessing everybody else is going to pop in now? The red sound on the wall next to the door. The screen read vacant. Finally, they found it. Juby felt, him, felt himself overwhelmed by a torrent of emotion. At last, they found the exit, but cold gripped his heart, and he knew all too well why. So he stood frozen, unsure of what to think or feel. It's Juby! Look! Behind you! He spun around. He couldn't believe what he saw. There was a door with the number 9 written across it. Was there... What? There was there a second door? Why? His voice was barely audible, even to himself. He stumbled across some toward the second door as if somehow compelled. A small single door. He sat in the starboard corner of the room on the wall as the door they'd entered from, but the opposite but in the opposite corner. Nine. There's no mistaking it. The red sat on the wall next to this door as well. Junpei shook the door handle up pointlessly and muttered to himself. Why? Why the hell are there two doors? It was Santa who answered. There were always two doors. Just think about it. Zero never said there was only one door with not with nine on it. It's hidden, but an exit can be found. Seek a way out. Seek a door that carries a nine. Of course, we just assumed that there was only one. After all, why would there be more than one? Oh man. Jeez. Jimmy was stunned. Zero's trick had been take, had taken him complete by surprise. There were two doors, that meant that all nine people who had met at the central staircase could escape but and leave and leave no one behind. Oh, alright. Now the reason for the bracelets was being clear. Divided in two, the digital route for both teams would be nine. For instance, one, two, seven, eight, and three, four, five, six, nine, the digital route for both teams would be nine. Or Blah blah blah, that would be nine. Uh, there are many other workable combinations, but they all ended up the same way. With the digital root of nine. What did that mean? The answer was quite simple. From the very beginning, the nunnery game was designed to save all nine people. Oh. Yay, we did it. Woo! Zero hadn't been lying. Zero had never said there was only one door. But anyone who found themselves in the game would have assumed that that was the case. Vice would have broken out. One team would likely betray or deceive the other. Someone might be hurt. Someone might get killed. But eventually they reached the room and Junpei now found himself in and realized the pointlessness of whatever violence they visited upon each other. There were two doors. No need to kill each other. They'd understand and be appalled or overwhelmed with guilt at what they'd done. Perhaps, perhaps that was the purpose of the game. That was now that was how the nunnery game was meant to be played. What the hell did number nine do? He went and fucking destroyed everything as he got himself blown to pieces. Fortunately, they hadn't started the fight with one another, at least not yet. If one misstep was made, wrong mistakes had happened. Uh, if wrong mistakes happened, the stakes would rise and no one would, would and, and the noose would tighten. The thought of it sent a chill down his spine. So what are we going to do, Junpei? 
But voice broke through Junpei's frantic thoughts. Sano's voice, and brought Junpei back to his senses. No use worrying about the future, he needed to figure out what they were going to do next. There were four people in the room, Ace Santa, Junpei, and June. The bracelets were, bracelet numbers were, this would be six. In other words, the four of them couldn't open a door with the number nine. But what if there was only, what if there were only three? Could door, could door nine be opened with three of them? It took him no time at all to determine the answer. There was only one combination of three people that would give a digital root of nine. One plus five, one plus three plus five. Oh no. That would mean June would be left behind. No! We gotta go back! That wasn't possible, he was willing to consider. That wasn't a possibility he was willing to consider. Santa and, a Santa and Ace agreed. Yep. I agree. We cannot leave June behind. She'd be let out of breath, a breath he hadn't realized he'd been holding. Are, are you sure? I, I don't mind staying. June's body betrayed her true feelings. Her eyes met with the beginnings of tears, and her, her legs shook. Aw. It's okay, there's no way we'd leave you behind. Santa had said what Junpei had known the moment he realized with th which three people w could go through the door. Besides, I'd rather drown at the bottom of the ocean than escape with this sausage fest. <laughs> may, I, may I get to go to, go to Atlanta? Oh, are you sure you don't mean Atlantis? <laughs> oh, right. Waka waka. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Perhaps it was a sudden reassurance that no one wanted to leave June behind, but Junpei laughed harder than he had had in some time. Santa and he smiled. You guys? June blinked tears from her eyes and, a, and bit her lips. She didn't seem to know what else to say. Very well, best we get back to Sea Deck. We should be able to take the, the elevator we passed earlier. Perhaps Clover 7 and Lewis will have returned from door 1. Even as they spoke, spoke, they knew finding the others wouldn't improve the situation. There was no way they could split into two teams that would go through the doors. Ace knew it. They all knew it. But there was nothing else they could do. They would, they would find the other three and search for another solution. Alright, let's go. Ace looked at all three of them and then turned and headed through the door. Santa and June followed. Junpei started toward the door, then stopped. He'd been too busy with other concerns to notice the room itself. It didn't seem terribly important now, but what exactly was it? Junpei looked around the room for the first time, noticing that the the things that weren't with noticing the things that weren't doors with nine on them. Rick carpet between two columns of wooden branches that ran the length of the room. Is it like a church or something? Carpet at this large set of the double doors ran toward the bow. Junpei wasn't sure. Oh, an altar? Was it an altar, perhaps? Oh my god, like, what, you're supposed to sacrifice somebody? There's a small rectangular alcove at the end of the carpet, and inside the alcove was a raised platform. Resting on top of the platform was a coffin. A coffin. What on earth was a coffin doing in a place like that? Before Junpei had time to answer the question. Hey Junpei, the hell are you doing? Let's move! Santa's voice echoed in from the hall outside. Right, okay. I'll be right there. Junpei turned on his heel and left the quiet, somber room. Oh boy. We're all screwed, because freaking nine had to blow himself up and... Snake was dead. God dang. Huh. Never up the coffin. So the coffin that the that must be the coffin that the chick was stored in, right? They took the elevator up to sea deck. Once there, they headed back to the main hall on the central staircase. It didn't take them long. Junpei found Seven and Lois waiting for them. They didn't look happy. <laughs> uh, yeah, we got a problem. Clover is gone. What? Junpei and three cameras look at one another. They turn back to Seven and Lois. What do you mean, gone? Santa, Ace, and June have their own questions to ask. When? Why? You two went into door one with Clover, didn't you? Seven and Lois respond as best they could. Yeah, we went through the door together. Clover barely spoke to us. She just did her own own thing the whole time. There were four rooms on the other side of the door. What? 
She wouldn't let us go into the fourth room. She said, I'll take care of this one. And shut the door. She must have blocked with something on the other side. She waited for a while, but Clover didn't come out. What the hell is going on? Call for her, but she didn't answer. God, is she, is she evil? Is she the evil demon among them all? So I kicked down the door and went into the room. Hell yeah. What? It was empty. Clover wasn't there. There was a door on the other wall. And it was open. I figured she opened the door and left by herself. We ran after her, of course, but... But obviously we didn't find her. You, you figure that out much out. Clover's gone. She be thought for a moment. When did this happen? We got here just before you. You certainly have excellent timing. So you haven't searched anywhere other than the staircase? Near the staircase? No, we haven't. Finally, Ace spoke. Voice on edge of resolve and concern. Very well then, we'd best separate and look for Clover. We haven't much time left. Let's begin. Our quick nods all around, the six remaining players spread out. Huh. Junpei and June ran to the central hospital and looked around. She's not here. No, she isn't. They searched a little longer, but with no luck. They couldn't find Clover. Finally, they gave up and left the central hospital room. Slowly, they made their way back to the hallway. At last, they reached the stairs, and Junpei spoke. Alright, I'm thinking we should probably split up. I'll head back to the stairs and take the elevator down to E deck. June, you can take the stairs up to B deck. Alright, that sounds good. But, um. What? Could you stop calling me by that code name when you were quite alone? <laughs> uh huh? Oh, sure, right. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll do that. There was a reason Junpei persisted in calling her June even though even when they were alone. Although perhaps not the best reason, he was embarrassed to call her by the, the nickname he'd used when they were children. Canny. Can- <laughs> Nine years ago, it came naturally after all they were- after all they were children. But now that they were adults, it felt strange. Regardless of what he might hope for, to call a woman he wasn't dating by such a childish nickname felt odd to him. Of course, to call her Miss Kurashiki would would be more awkward, and simply Kurashiki would have would seemed a little br uh, brusque. He just called her Akane, right? That's... And although he couldn't put his finger on it, he felt somewhat forward to call her Akane when they hadn't seen one another for so long. I mean, she's been calling you jumpy all day, so I mean... In short, it was simply easy for, easier for him to call her June and leave it at that. Alright, I'm going then. Yeah, be careful. Can Canny. <laughs> June, or perhaps more appropriately, Canny blushed and smiled. Be careful too, Junkie. Yeah, don't die. Seriously, we haven't, we're having sex before this game ends, alright? We're freaking doing it. It's gonna be awesome. I've got condoms. Let's do this. Take care. We looked after her for a moment as she ran upstairs and turned around and took off to the hallway. Oh god, what's gonna happen? I don't see this ending well. Everybody's splitting up and... Okay, what are we doing? Ding dong. Do -do -do -do. Tragedy always strikes when one least expects it. But to wait for a man to stand before stri striking him striking him down seems almost crueler than dealing the fatal blow while he lies on the ground. What the hell? A light in a dark place. June's smile had given him hope. Both for escape and possibly for something else. There's that hope that raised his spirits, just enough that they might soon be fully dashed. Oh, shit. He opened the elevator door, and there she was. A woman s sat, slashed against the wall. Lotus. Jimmy felt his, his blood turn to ice. Her body was limp, and her skin smooth and pale as always. Holy shit. Was covered in bright red blood. Jubi felt his chest constrict. Oh, fuck. <laughs> you know what? I kind of wanted you dead for a while, but now that I see it, it's kind of freaking me out, because it probably means I'm going to die. Good lord. Even, even in death, her boobs are freaking ridiculous. Couldn't breathe, and his legs began to shake. A slow, cold drop of sweat trickled down his back. He felt his stomach somersault. Jubi's mind went blank. All his thoughts were replaced with endless, hissing white. Driven by little more than instinct, he began to walk toward Lotus slowly. 
Each slow movement of his stiff limbs brought him closer to her corpse. He finally stood next to her. Robotically, he bent down and put his hand against, against her neck. There was no pulse. No rise and fall of breathing. She was slightly warm. Something somewhere in Junpei's shaken mind told him that she, that meant that she'd been killed recently. Yes, Junpei thought, his mind slowly returning as she, she had been killed. Someone had killed her. Oh, fuck. There was a deep cut on the left side of her chest. Blood still oozing from it, although clearly her heart had been stopped, had stopped beating for some time ago. The, the, the weapon had been a knife then. Perhaps she'd been stabbed in the heart once? She would have she would have died immediately. Oh fuck. Is Clever going apeshit crazy? He took a little comfort from knowing she must have suffered very little. <laughs> Damn it. Ugh. Oh, whatever. I never liked you anyway. Oh well, at least I get to motorboat him now. <laughs> uh sorry, I've been wanting to do that for a while though. Anyway, rest may your moves rest in peace. And you know, you. Although only then Junpei noticed, Lotus' bracelet was gone. Oh my god. L lastly, let's discuss how to remove the bra- Move the bracelets. There are only two ways. One, you escape from the ship. Two, your heart rate reaches zero. In other words, once the bracelet is taken off outside the confines of the ship, or the Texas where his heartbeat is falling to zero, it will shut down automatically. Was it- was that why the killer had ended Los's life? So that they might have the number eight bracelet? If that was true, then the killer was whoever wanted the number eight bracelet. Or, perhaps more accurately, the person who would gain the most by obtaining bracelet number eight. Uh. Um. Well, I'm thinking, I was like, first ace, no. I mean, that would get nine, but you need three people, right? Would it be, I guess, would it actually be Clover? I don't know. Who is that? Who would benefit the most from number eight bracelet? The thought had only, only just entered Jude's mind. Oh, fuck! Hear a noise. It sounded like a sharp knife cutting through wet meat. It struck him as strange that the noise came from inside his own body. A moment later, the pain hit him. It wasn't merely pain. That was, there was heat, extreme heat as well. He felt as though molten iron had been splashed against the side of his body. Finally, his brain made the connection. He had been stabbed, but where? His body was quickly going numb. He couldn't tell where the knife had been made it met his flesh. Oh God, can someone? Yes, this isn't going to end well. Given the circumstances, however, he most likely he'd been stabbed in the back. Whoever killed no Lotus had now done the same to Junpei as well. Oh, fuck. I'm the main protagonist. Damn it. His gro his voice was... L Wait, so... Let me think. Eight. He's got five. Thirteen. Holy shit. So that... If, if June had his bracelet... And her bracelet, she could get out. Oh my god. Did he, did he get stabbed by June? I was thinking it might have been Clover, but... Ugh. The little strength he had left, Junpei turned his body, trying to catch a glimpse of his attacker. As he did, the knife dug itself deeper, twisting viciously. Oh, fuck him! He collapsed to the floor, a puppet with his strings cut. His arms and legs lay where they fell, oddly twisted and awkwardly positioned. Junpei's body was entirely numb. He could feel the blood leaking out of him, but he, nothing would move. Nothing save his eyes. He's laying on the floor as, uh, as life ebbing away, Junpei finally saw his attacker. Two tiny hands of the killer reflected in his eyes. With that recognition came nothing. He felt no emotions, not anger, not sadness, not regret. Paralysis that had his body had reached his mind. His killer glanced down at his body. Without a word, climbed to the elevator and was gone. As I said, began to fade, the world grew blurry and began to dissolve into empty white fog. Fog crept into his edges of his mind and worked inexorably inward. Soon swallowed the last that remained of Junpei's mind. His consciousness left him. There was nothing more. Into utter emptiness he fell. Into zero. Wherever Junpei had been was gone. Son of a freaking. <laughs> Bad end. Way to go, you fucking failed. Damn. Well, that sucks. Uh. Ah. Uh. Oh man. Okay, so you've reached one ending. This game has multiple endings. In order to experience all the endings, you need to save now.
Once you save, you can restart the game with the information you've acquired in this playthrough saved. So, okay, tiny hands. So it's gotta be either it's gotta be either June or Clover. The thing is though, Clover if with both of theirs wouldn't give her a way out. Only June's would have given her a way out. Oh, that'd be fucking horrible though. It's like that would suck. I knew it. This ah, uh, she's she was trying so hard to get into to Junpei's pants. She was like, "Fuck this! He's never gonna get a guy." <laughs> He's like, "No, uh, I want to have sex with you so badly. Why didn't you get it, you stupid fuck?" But then, but but he was, but Lotus was, but then, how did she kill uh, Lotus? I mean, he was with Jim. Jim was with Junpei the whole time, so. I guess it was Clover, but like, I don't know. Once you're in the game again, you can skip through the text you've already seen, simply pressing the right on the control pad. Oh, good, thank God. Thank you, sweet baby Jesus. Once you reach lines you haven't read, choices it will automatically stop. Memory of Escape has been added to the title screen. It tells you to play the stages you've completed. It's recommended to save after this in order to unlock Memory of Escape. Ah, uh, okay. Yes, we retained. Oh, I see. You got stabbed in the back, bitch. Sounds good. You can import in. Ah, oh, fuck. Give us memories, memories of the escape. I see. All right, cool. Well, damn. <laughs> oh, that sucks. Fuck whoever did that. Damn it, the bastard. It's it's gotta be. It's it's either freaking June or. Clover, but I, I don't really get how June could have killed Lotus when she was... Maybe they're working together. They're tag team and they're evil. Evil, dirty, dirty whores. <sighs> Regardless, though, I guess I'll end it here for now, guys. <sighs> and, uh, yeah, next time I guess I'll try out some of the... Uh, let's try out some of the, uh, the other doors. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I... Most of the time I only had two options, so I was like, might as well just go through the opposite doors that I couldn't go through before, so I... Anyway... Like for if you enjoy this video, subscribe now and hop with your CLP. The days are always sunny and the vids are always funny. And until next time, guys, stay classy.